Welcome to Access a Trader, the number one community for those who are committed to taking control of their trading in order to achieve success, profitability, and longevity. Thank you for joining us. Here's Dan Shapiro to help you find your edge, master your process, and own your future. Hey guys, good evening everybody. Welcome to another edition of uh, the access of uh, nightly wrap up show. Hope everybody is uh, doing well. Quick update tonight. Got to get my kids to uh, basketball training. So pretty. Everybody is doing well. All I think I ask is if you get like, again, what we're doing, like the content, all that good stuff. Uh, again, take a second, uh, like uh, the video, subscribe, uh, all that good uh, social media stuff. And again, I'll try to do my darndest uh, to help you guys out on a day to day basis on a very unbiased way of looking at the market. So a uh, basic, uh, basic review, um, you know, markets continue to do well. You could see uh, continuous uh, upward surges, even the names uh, that rest. And again, you, you see a lot of names that are resting. Uh, Amazon, after a big run, uh, rested. Uh, Microsoft uh, is resting, but again, might be a day away from kind of reclaiming supply. We'll get to that uh, in a second. Netflix, after a big, big, uh, breakout in the last couple of days, uh, resting. Uh, so it's very, very important that what we talk about every single day, leaving the ones that had their major breakouts, just leave them all, right? Leave them alone, wait for them to come back. So for example, uh, NVIDIA now has been on a beautiful, beautiful two-day run. Uh, yesterday broke out, took every single level. Today, it continued, uh, got all the way up to this 125 level. Hey, look, is it, does it have one more day? You know, maybe it gets to this 126, 127 level before a, a well-deserved uh, rest. Maybe, right? Maybe. But the point is, try to find names uh, that are, again, coming out of the channels. The last thing you want to do is start chasing price action that a stock broke out 20, 30, 40%. So, for example, somebody asked me today, you know, Dan, what do you think about the Qs? And my, my response was, well, they, they broke out above 471. Right now, the Qs after hours, we'll get to that in a second. There are 16 points above the breakout. Again, there's no edge up here, right? There's no edge. This is just a continuation of what the stock, what the ETF did technically. And that's what you want to do. You want to avoid the overstretched names. And this is something that a reminder I try to uh, implement on every single night's video to kind of to make sure that you guys understand you're trying to get the, the bulk of the move, right? You're trying to get uh, the meat of the move. You're not trying to get uh, the last couple of crumbs. You're not trying to get just the, the you know the dessert. You're trying to get the meal. So if you're buying a stock and it's up 15, 20% above its uh, natural breakout level, there's always a higher probability you'll get pulled. Because the stocks that get pulled, and again, doesn't mean that the market's going to go down. It just means that a stock needs a rest. The stock needs a reset. A stock needs a, 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 a little bit of a, of a floor to get its uh, C-Lex together. It's very, very important to understand that. And if you look at the action today, uh, nothing really jumps out, which is a good thing. That's a really, really good thing from the bull case. You have the Dow snapping a four-day winning streak, uh, down about 300 points. Again, did anybody uh, even notice? You had the S&P uh, you know, down about 10 points. Again, did anybody even notice? And the NASDAQ squeaked out a seven-point uh, victory. But more important, right, more important is when the stocks that had their big runs, when they rested, it's the other names that we've been talking about for the last you know se several days. It's the other names that are starting to get back above their channels, that are starting to get into a technical sweet spot. And those are the names uh, we want to, uh, we want to uh, concentrate on. So let's talk about some names for tomorrow. Again, materialistically, nothing has changed. The market continues to be good. The strong stocks with the resting, uh, the stocks that are coming out of the ranges, they're the ones we want to concentrate on. Those are the ones that we are uh, looking for option flow. And that starts with Tesla, right? So Tesla didn't break out yesterday, didn't break out the day before. Stock Tesla broke out above the 235 level, right? I think we could all uh, agree on that. In a perfect world, we get a back test into the five-day moving average. I don't see that happen. I was waiting for that back test today. It never happened. Uh, Goldman Sachs actually came out with a piece uh, that told their investors buy calls ahead of their uh, robo taxi event. Yeah, they should have told them that over at 235, not at 260. Again, they're probably going to be deemed to be right. But the, the the option activity started with the aggressive buyers 
uh, on that 235 break, right? Not at the 260 break or the 235 break. So again, a lot of times that, you know, a lot of times there is such a big disconnect between reality and what these brokers are telling their clients that sometimes they do get lucky because the momentum of the stock uh, is going to make them right. Uh, we continuously see, uh, now we're seeing massive, massive uh, 260, 265, 270 weeklies. Tomorrow is uh, what, Thursday? So we only have a couple of days till expiration. I have to assume if we don't get a pull tomorrow on Tesla, I, not a pull, I, I don't want to use the word pull because it sounds negative. If we don't get a a, a well-deserved back test into rising five-day support, because I want to get long in that support. I'm not saying pull back to as, as a short. I want to get long in that support because the options market is really, really dictating that this thing is going a lot high, right? A lot higher. Again, maybe they're betting uh, that the uh, robo event will be uh, phenomenal. I, I don't. Th- I don't care at this point, right? I don't care at this point. There's a lot of momentum in the name. Uh, stock has given us some phenomenal, phenomenal moves. Uh, you know, is there a shot it gets to this 271 level, uh, which is the high from uh, July the 11th on this interval? Yeah, why not? Why not? Right. So I, I do think uh, in the next two days that Tesla is going to wake up once again. Again, I'm hoping. I'm hoping we can get some morning weakness. Just to get a little bit of a washout to get some uh, get get some cheaper shares on rising support, but again, I don't see that. I don't see that happening. That's how strong the stock is. But I'm definitely looking to uh, re-enter the trade. I don't have a single share on it uh, right now. A um, couple of names to definitely watch for tomorrow, right? Definitely, definitely watch for tomorrow. I want to give you guys some some pretty good setups here. Um, let me see. Let me see what I want to talk to you guys about. Uh, let me see what I want to talk to you guys about. All right. So MU, MU uh, came out with great earnings after the close. Uh, stock is up about 12, 13 percent. Um, this is not, you know, this is not, um, th- these are all fake prints. Uh, this is not uh, determining a feasibility determination of the, the Micron setup. It's all the other semiconductor names, right? It's all the other semiconductors that are very, very close uh, to coming out of big, big ranges. Let's talk about a few of them. Arm looks great. Look at Arm, guys. Look how close this thing is. Look how close this thing is to reclaiming the highest level above the 50-day moving average. And with uh, MU's good number, if it starts you know, really fueling the other semiconductors tomorrow, maybe Arm confirms. Guys, watch this. This is a consolidation now. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Tomorrow will be day 10. That's two full trading weeks. So if ARM could get about above this channel, this thing looks really good. AMD, okay? AMD looks phenomenal. AMD looks phenomenal. They were coming in for uh, the 6250 weeklies, the 170 weeklies. Guys, this is now the first close above this whole supply zone. You see it, guys? There's nothing left. There's literally nothing left. If AMD can confirm tomorrow, and obviously, again, the Micron, uh, you know, fueling these other semis could be, you know, could be it. Uh, but if AMD confirms today's channel and starts building above the opening range high, guys, look how much room there is. There's no supply uh, all the way up to 174, 175. So that's, that one is definitely, definitely on watch uh, for tomorrow. Um, let me give you one more. Look at Chipotle. If this was Tesla, right? If this was Tesla, I would be in this thing with both hands, right? It, 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 this is a two-week consolidation, really good rest. I'm still waiting for the options market to kind of wake this thing up. I haven't really been seeing any any notable call buyers that are coming into this name, but look at this tight. Look at how tight this flag is. You can't get any tighter. Again, I don't know if this, this trade is imminent. I don't know if it's for tomorrow, for the next day, or maybe never. But once it breaks above this supply zone, right? Once it gets finally above the hundred day SMA, this thing potentially could go on a multi day, multi week run. So it's definitely a name. Uh, we definitely want to watch. And let's talk about Microsoft really quick before I log off, right? So Softy had a major, major run up, right? Again, 50-day moving average, the importance of it. That's all point of uh, of uh, the, the 50-day. So that major run up came back. We had a great pivot on it to the downside yesterday. As you can see now, back-to-back days, it's been rejected off the five-day. The five-day is the shortest sentiment, uh, at least in my book. I, I think I'm one of the very few traders uh, that use the five day, and a lot of people use the nine day, the ten day, whatever. No, not the nine, but the nine day, the twenty day. I use the five. I like the five a lot because it really shows me uh, who has uh, short term uh, control of the trade. So as you can see here, Microsoft's gotten rejected back to back days above the five day. 
if it could reclaim back the five-day moving average, if you guys notice, this is the first green candle in the last one, two, three, four, five, six days. So what this means is it was a higher close than the open. In the last six days, it were lower closes than the open. So you know, something it's something to think about. So if Microsoft could get back above the five-day moving average, uh, we can finally start to see uh, upward bias. So again, Tesla looks great. I want to love to see a little bit of weakness tomorrow to get some cheaper shares. Uh, Tesla looks great. Uh, AMD looks great. ARM looks great. Uh, Chipotle, if this thing decides to wake up in this lifetime of the nest, that looks great. But the most important thing, guys, always remember, you're not trading the market. You're trading individual names. Guys, God bless everybody. Have a great night. God bless. And with God's help, I'll see you all tomorrow. Take care.